Following Zeon's invasion of Earth, development of Zaku specifically for use on the planet was a given. Using the already tried and true Zaku 2 F type as a basis, various ground and marine units were developed. Starting off with the ground units, we first got the MS-06J Zaku 2 ground type. Visually, it was very difficult to tell the J type apart from the F type. The only way to do so was to look at the verniers or the lag thereof. Since they were useless on the J type, they were removed, resulting in a lighter machine. Two other improvements for the ground pounder were an upgraded reactor to better deal with gravity and better environmental isolation. This also gave it limited underwater capabilities. Weapons on the other hand were identical. Whatever the F-Type could use, the J-Type could also use. Although there are a few weapons that are more synonymous with the J-Type because they were more commonly used on Earth. These were the leg-mounted triple missile launchers and the Magella Top Cannon. As supplies were getting stricter on Earth, several Xeon engineers came up with the idea that the main cannon of the Magella attack would work pretty well as a heavier artillery weapon. And since most Zakus on Earth were probably J-types by this time, the weapon seems to be mostly linked to them nowadays. Just as the F-type, the J-type also featured a number of variations. The first one was a minor upgrade in the form of the JC-type. And again, the unit is visually mostly identical to its predecessor. The only ways to distinguish them is that some units were known to use a spike shield on the right shoulder and that their standard issue paint job was slightly different. Other than these minor visual differences, the unit featured better thrusters and an overhauled cockpit. It was now moved to the middle of the body, had its ergonomics improved, and also had additional screens. Another variant was known as the JE type, but at the moment very little is known about this unit. All records seem to have been lost and we currently only know about the head of one unit. So as far as the head goes, it had a wiper for the mono eye shield to improve its all-weather performance. A bigger upgrade was the MS-06G Zaku 2 High Mobility Ground Type. When the goof was being developed, Xeonic engineers realized that one of the biggest improvements were the leg-mounted thrusters. So plans were made to retrofit these thrusters onto J-Type Zakus. As a result, the G-Type had unmistakable goof-esque thighs that also allowed for the elimination of the external power pipes. Other obvious differences were a new shoulder shield, a very goof-esque shoulder pauldron, and a high-performance backpack that was on par with the JC-Type and also included a powerful antenna. All of this made the G-Type into a highly mobile machine that was one of the most powerful ground units of the One Year War. For weaponry, it could again use all of the standard Zaku equipment, but it would be mostly seen with either the giant bazooka or an upgraded version of the Zaku machine gun that now also had a barrel shroud. However, shortly after this powerful Zaku was rolled out, development of the goof was completed. So after only 50 G-types were produced, production shifted to the goof. Still, they were popular and one customized unit would continue to see action after the One Year War, after it was purchased from the black market. This unit was initially known as the Zaku 2 High Mobility Type Dean West Custom, and after being damaged, it was upgraded into the MS-06G Zaku 2 High Mobility Ground Type plus R-Type Legs plus Goof Custom Arm. I think the upgrades speak for themselves. A more specialized version was the MS-06D Zaku Desert Type, and this time, telling it apart from the regular Zaku was quite easy. Aside from the stronger armor, it also had dustproof joints, and the regular backpack was now replaced with a heatsink-esque radiator backpack. To make up for the loss of thrust, auxiliary thrusters were installed on the waist and the legs that gave it better mobility on the vast savannas and the deserts that it would be operating in. In terms of weaponry, they could again use the regular Zaku weapons, but they would be almost exclusively seen with a specifically designed, lightweight version of the Zaku machine gun. For heavier firepower then, they could be equipped with a Rats Ripper 3-tube missile pod on the left arm shield and a Rats Ripper P3 twin-tube missile pod on each side skirt. Originally, two versions of the Zaku Desert type were produced, the twin rod antenna version and the single blade antenna version. Both received an initial production run of 43 units, and later a second production run of 28 single-blade antenna units was approved. This resulted in a total of 114 desert types produced at the California base that were then shipped to various fronts in Africa. 
The single antenna units were most famously used by the Garibaldi team in the Gambian Sahara, and the twin antenna units were most famously tested and used by the Caracal unit who operated from the Libyan desert to the west bank of the Suez Canal. While it's not known exactly when the desert types were rolled out, it was at the time that the goof was already in development. It has also been suggested that the second run of the Desert Zakus was slightly improved with a better cooling backpack, lighter armor materials and redesigned dust covers. Then after the One Year War, some of these units were further upgraded by Xeon Remnants into the MS-06D Desert Zaku. Although despite sharing the same model number and a very similar name, the Desert Zaku was quite a radical departure. Its armor was overhauled, it was outfitted with even more sand filters for ambushes in the desert, and the generator was now replaced with a significantly more powerful one. Despite supposedly being made with parts stolen from Federation bases, they all have a surprisingly uniform look, with the exception of the Desert Zaku used by Desert Rommel. Also, they can use jet skis. As in, skis with jets on them. One of the main reasons that the Earth Federation was able to stay in the war was thanks to their absolute air superiority throughout all of the One Year War. With Xeon's only fighter being the less than ideal DOP, another solution was needed to combat the Federation's fighters and bombers. This then resulted in the MS-06K Zaku cannon type. Again developed at Xeon's California base, the K type was unfortunately less successful than the D type. This was mainly due to a mid-development shift of focus. After witnessing the power of the Federation's gun cannon, it was decided to turn the K-Type into an anti-mobile suit artillery unit rather than an anti-air unit. For this purpose, it was then fitted with a new backpack that featured two big gun rocket launchers and a single 180mm cannon. This thing had enough power to tear through an enemy mobile suit but the recoil also unbalanced the Zaku itself. However, it seems that the need for an artillery support unit was greater than the balance issues. Even though official records show that only 9 units were produced, many more units have been spotted throughout the years, both during and after the One Year War. And these were all equipped with a variety of standard Zaku weaponry in addition to the already mounted weaponry. Typically the units had a single antenna, but there was also a version with a twin blade antenna such as Ace Pilot Ian Graydon's unit. Because of the way the antennas looked, this version was nicknamed the Zaku Cannon Rabbit type. One cool feature of the Zaku Cannon was that its backpack was quite modular. The big guns could be removed, the 180mm cannon could be replaced with a 120mm Gatling, and the whole backpack itself could also relatively easily be replaced with that of a standard J-Type. This then also meant that the opposite was possible, resulting in the MS-06 JK Zaku Half Cannon. And of course this unit was again developed at the California base. This unit was quite literally a standard J-Type with the K-Type's backpack and shoulder armor. While it could technically use the 180mm cannon, it presumably stuck with the 120mm Gatling since the recoil issues would probably be even worse on a regular Zaku. A final unit that was developed from the J-Type was the prototype Goof. But for obvious reasons, we won't be talking about that in this video. This is no Zaku, boy! No Zaku! Instead, we're moving on to the Marine Zakus. Dubbed the MS-06M1 Zaku Marine type, this Zaku was the first ever true amphibious mobile suit. But it wasn't necessarily the first successful one. The Marine type was merely an F-type with waterproof seals on the joints, a slightly different head that now also had Vulcan guns, and hydrojet engines on the back, the arms and the legs. Originally, five units were produced and sent to the Sea Serpent Submarine Squadron for testing. But these machines proved quite unsatisfactory. They were unstreamlined, sluggish underwater, and their waterproof joints simply weren't quite waterproof. Then in terms of weaponry, they would typically use the SUPROC gun, standing for Submarine Rocket, and two four-tube 240mm rocket pods. But despite their shortcomings, 
Their story didn't end here. Two more units were produced, their model number was changed to MSM-01, and they were distributed to various submarine squadrons. Fortunately for them, new marine units were already looming on the horizon, and the seven Zaku marine types would be mostly relegated to data gathering. But again, their story continued. After the war, the Federation requisitioned these failed marine units and began tinkering with them, resulting in the MS-06M Marine Hyzak. And while they looked identical to the Zaku marine type, they were quite different on the inside. Depending on the account, these units either used a Hyzak generator or used a full-on Hyzak prototype inner frame. Especially in the latter case, that would suggest that these units far surpassed the original units. These would then be further developed into the RMS-192 Zaku Mariner. Unfortunately, the Federation never got to use them as they fell into neo zeon hands when they invaded the Earth. Another development of the Zaku Marine type was the MSM-02 Hydro Test Type, this time developed by Zeonic's rival, Zimod. It had a nice arsenal of weapons, but it still lacked in underwater performance, and even out of the water, it wasn't the best. And that is all for this episode of Development History. Of course, there are still many more Zakus to cover, so be sure to stay tuned for similar content, and consider leaving a like while you're at it. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope all of you watching have a great day, and I'll see you all next time!